tonight on The Passionate Eye. From KGB spy to ruler of the Kremlin, a controversial president's rise to power. In The Putin System, longtime supporters... Fifteen years ago, our nation was strong and powerful. ...and his harshest critics... There is only one key word for KGB mentality. The word is control. ...give insight into the life and political motivations of Vladimir Putin, a point-of-view documentary that ultimately presents an ominous view of what Putin is willing to do to restore the old Russia of his dreams. I think that in Putin's entourage, there are people who implement whatever they think, not always even explicit, whatever they think his policies should be or he wants the policies to be. How much of it directly comes from Putin or how much of it just fits into the whole KGB, Stalin, Putinist system, which is kind of a hybrid of all of those things. Russia and to be in power in this great Russia. This is the goal that justify all kinds of means, whether it is war in Chechnya or it's uh, intrigues in Ukraine or it's uh, manipulating by gas or it's just putting down all opponents or it's just control of media or it's, uh, it's just special relations with Iran, whatever. In March 2000, Vladimir Putin, an obscure ex-KGB man, is elected as president of Russia. What thoughts cross the new president's mind as he climbs his stairs to the throne of the Tsars? Is he thinking of his games on the banks of the Neva in Leningrad, now called St. Petersburg once more? Of when he was king of the gang in the communal apartment block where his family shared two rooms? Is he picturing the heroes of his youth like Yuri Gagarin, sensing the presence of the Tsars, whose shadows linger within these walls? Or is his mind fixed on the mission he has set himself, to save Russia, whatever the cost, from the chaos left by his predecessor, Boris Yeltsin? <laughs> Patriotic and fascinated by Tsarist imperialism in his youth, Vladimir Putin was also deeply influenced by the Soviet regime. The country that has elected him is thirsty for a new hero who will revive national strength and pride. Even the memories of Stalin's purges seem obliterated by disillusion of the present. The Russian people are nostalgic for past glory. to Vladimir Putin's future destiny is his early passion for the secret services. As a boy, he spends hours at the local cinema watching a Stalinist classic, the heroic deeds of a secret agent. Single-handed, the hero changes the destiny of a whole nation. At the age of 16, Vladimir Putin knocks on the door of the KGB headquarters in St. Petersburg and asks to join. He is told that the KGB alone decide who and when they recruit. However, they advise him to study languages and law. Vladimir Putin is 23 and in his fourth year at law school when the organization contacts him. Mr. Putin belongs to that generation of Russians who joined the KGB in 1975 when they knew perfectly well about the crimes committed by Stalin about the role the Soviet state security played in the dramatic history of my country. When Putin joins the KGB, the chairman is Yuri Andropov, later to replace Leonid Brezhnev as head of state. The KGB represented the nation's elite for Andropov and helped him rule the country with an iron fist, persecuting political dissidents. 
But Andropov also knew that if the USSR was to survive, it needed to drastically reorganize its economy. The Soviet leadership realized that they're in a deep uh, structural crisis by beginning of 80s. Andropov understood that they have to prepare some changes because otherwise the country will collapse. That was done secretly. It was not announced to the public. It was done quietly. They worked out uh, the whole policy of perestroika, which later Gorbachev inherited. Today, Putin continues to pay homage to his mentor. Yuri Andropov unknowingly transmitted his vision of the state and his economic objectives to Vladimir Putin, influencing his own politics. The young KGB officer's first post is in St. Petersburg, where, as a minor officer, he is involved in the hunt for dissidents. Ten years later, he is posted to Dresden in East Germany. With the help of the Stasi, the East German Secret Service, his mission is to recruit informers. Inspired by Andropov, he also builds a network of business contacts, which will be very useful in later years. Upgraded to Lieutenant Colonel, Putin is still in Germany at the fall of the Berlin Wall. The world around him collapses. He asks for military support. The Kremlin remains silent. Putin feels that he and his country have been betrayed. He has no other choice than to return to St. Petersburg. It is probably at this moment that his vision for the future of the country is born. Appointed as a reserve officer at the University of St. Petersburg, Putin encounters his former law professor, Anatoly Sobchak, an ally of Boris Yeltsin, the Democrat reformer. At that time, General Oleg Kalugin is the head of the KGB in St. Petersburg, in command of 3,000 officers. When Kalugin later criticizes Putin's war in Chechnya, Putin accuses him of treason. He is forced to leave Russia. Sobchak, the man who was one of the earlier Russian reformers, said, Oleg, I'm looking for some guy from the KGB in St. Petersburg who I could rely on. Could you offer me some name, someone? Because, listen, I do not know the organization, and I know I could not be the mayor of the city without having some friends or some, some kind of a relationship inside. Putin joined Sobchak's election campaign team and helped him become mayor of the city. It is a decisive moment in the KGB officer's career, his first entry into politics. The KGB needs inside informers. Putin becomes the link between the organization and Sobchak. The idea is probably to identify people who are going to be major players, major political players in Russia within the next 5, 10, 15, 20 years and uh, to put enough uh, KGB personnel around those people to secure that when those people will be moved to the next position, those people from KGB are going to be around. And uh, that's how you secure that the system, in this particular case, KGB system, will stay into power. And that's exactly what's happening with Vladimir Putin. Putin feels at home with the KGB strategy of control, discreetly observing and learning, never revealing personal ambitions. Throughout his career, this will be one of the keys to his own system. In 1991, a wind of revolt sweeps through the Soviet republics. Vladimir Putin is 39, and the USSR is in its last throes. President Gorbachev plans political reforms considered dangerous by the conservative KGB generals. They attempt a putsch. With Gorbachev's blessing, the Democrat reformer and leader of the Russian Republic, Boris Yeltsin, leads the resistance against the putschists. In St. Petersburg, Yeltsin's ally, Anatoly Sobchak, is also supported by the population. Tired of 70 years of communist rule, the Pushists are defeated, the generals arrested, and the KGB is in disgrace. Putin realizes that it's in his own interest to stay with the winning camp and the reformers. 
Like many, he resigns from the KGB, but will never forget his allegiance to the organization and its methods. During his 15 years of service, he had made the KGB system his own. At the end of 1991, Yeltsin declares the sovereignty of Russia. Gorbachev resigns. The USSR is dismantled. The Soviet republics become independent. Putin will never forget these events. Later, he declares they were the greatest geopolitical catastrophe of the century.